Welcome to St. Paul's. Today is January 17th, the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Throughout the season of Epiphany, we will be worshiping with morning prayer from daily prayer for all seasons, produced in 2014 by the Office of the General Convention of the Episcopal Church. And today, our preacher will be the Reverend Canon Robert Tubulls. He is the missioner for the Department of Indian Work and Multicultural Ministries for our diocese, the, the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. Now let us center ourselves and prepare for worship.
Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Let us pray. Open our eyes that we may see, incline our hearts that we may desire, order our steps that we may follow the way of your commandments. Amen. God be with you and also with you. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshiped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again and said, 
Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. If he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, saying, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or by offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called to Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me that he has told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. me you know me through and through you know when I rise up you know when I rest you read my thoughts from far away you watch over each step you know when I sleep you are acquainted with
things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and also will raise us up by his power. Do you not know that the bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make the members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John.
One of John's disciples who heard him speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys my resting place, and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. There's an old saw that I first heard some years ago that says, when God calls, it is always a collect call. Nowadays, it may need to go something like, when God calls, your data will be used. You see, when God calls, it means you will need to give something of yourself up, such as your time, your treasures, yourself. When God calls, it says to follow me. What is your reply? Would your act reaction be like Andrew, Peter, and Philip, who had little or no hesitation and followed? Or you might be more like Nathaniel, who was skeptical at first, and had to toss a little insult comedy bit first. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This little toss can be like someone from the cities today saying, can anything good come out of Bemidji or whatever small town and community that lies outside of the metro area? Philip replies, come and see. The same invite that Jesus gave Peter and Andrew earlier in the story Jesus said, follow me, come and see. Answering the call to ordained ministry requires a few steps that can be daunting and may seem difficult. One usually begins by meeting with your priest to talk about the call. One may have received that call earlier in life or from your faith community. I've met a few individuals who felt called when they were kids, but would try to write it off as some childhood fantasy. One guy I knew says when he was a little kid, he used to pretend he was a priest doing the Eucharist. Others may have heard the call when they were young adults, and it would take a few decades and a career later when they finally responded. 
Still others would respond immediately and begin the process. After meeting with your priests, you then meet with the vestry, the bishop's committee, and then the bishop to talk about your call. If one gets through this part, then it's more meetings with diocesan committees and sessions with a psychologist and a psychiatrist, and then retreats. If one is called to go on to the seminary track, then you'll need to take the GREs, followed by an applications that are filled out and sent to whatever seminary you're hoping to attend. Finances need to be sorted out. Unless you're wealthy, you got to expect to have a large debt at the end of this three-year period. And then the way for the acceptance letter. Once you get in, the next three-year period is filled with study, tests, exams, and the summer doing clinical pastoral education in a hospital setting, books to read, and then prayer, lots of prayer. And during the winter of your third year, there is that big test the general ordination exams, also known as the GOEs. Students' stress levels seem to be on high all the time. When I was a seminary student, I had been told on a few occasions by my fellow students that there is no guarantee that just because one made it to this point, that one will be ordained. More pressure. After graduation, there are more meetings and appointments and God willing and ordinations, the diaconate, and then six months later, the ordination to the priesthood, a rigorous process, which has been lined up more and more through the years, but still rigorous. Have you heard this call? Are you open to responding to it? Now, when I was in my early 20s, I was called to join an intentional community and to work in the inner city of Washington, D.C. for one year. I spent that year renovating townhouses in the Shaw Street neighborhood of inner city D.C., working for MANA, Inc. MANA, Inc. is a non-denominational Christian-based nonprofit organization that has housed well over a thousand families since the time I was with them. When I reflect back on that time, a few things are clear, clear enough for me. My life was much simpler then, which made moving to a new place easy. Would I be able to do that today? Back then I could pack all my worldly possessions in one large duffel bag and and carry on and hop a flight. Today, it would take a large tractor trailer, a house sale, to name just a few things to consider to what would be a hand, complex, a collect call, or much of my data used. A question that I get at times is, uh, why would a young Native man go do volunteer work in our nation's capital? Most people go there to work for the feds or with some extension of the government. At the time, I couldn't give a real firm answer, but after this long time of looking back, I could readily say that it was a call that got me up to follow, a call that had taken me out of my comfort zone, out of all that was familiar to me, and placed an area of the city that no tourist would dare think of visiting. My life had become much more fuller as a result. I went and saw Jesus. That is what Jesus is calling us to do. Follow me. Come and see. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Jesus, you are the light of the world. May your light open our eyes to see those in need. Jesus, you are the light of the world. May the works of our lives demonstrate your love. Jesus, you are the light of the world. May your wisdom enlighten our decisions. 
Jesus, you are the light of the world. Hear the prayers of our hearts. This week in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Australia. And throughout the month of January, we pray for the Youth Commission and Teens Encounter Christ that will be held virtually this year for faith formation ministries with children, youth, and young adults. We also pray for those who suffer or are in trouble found on our prayer list, and especially Kate B., Nikolai, Barb E., and Tom E. For those serving in the armed forces, for those who are in seminary or discernment, for those who are working on the front lines of this pandemic, for those who are in long-term care facilities or homebound, for those who have died, and also for Nancy Piper Amundsen and Lucille L, Virginia M, and Harry Whitmer Goach and Harry Whitmer Goach Jr., in whose memory the flowers on the altar are given. At this time, I invite you to add your own prayers or interceptions. As you enlighten our lives, may we be light for others. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God be always with you and also with you. May you know the peace of Christ this week and share it with others. We have announcements this week. Here is our schedule of services and offerings. On Monday at 9 a.m., reflection and announcements on Facebook. Tuesdays at 9 a.m., Bible study via Zoom. Wednesdays, at 6 p.m., Faith Formation on Facebook for families. At 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, we have Adult Formation via Zoom. On Thursdays at 9 p.m., Compline on Facebook or the website. At 9.15, we have a post-Compline chat via Zoom. On Fridays, morning prayer via Facebook. And of course, we'll be back again next Sunday at 10 a.m. for worship. And like today, we will have a Zoom coffee hour at about 9.45 a.m. All of your Zoom links can be found on our website. We have some birthdays this week. On Friday the 15th, Sophia Morin Swanson. On Saturday the 16th, we have two, Mickey Ferguson and Eric Thomas. On the 19th, Ethan Hargrove. On the 21st, Arden Grimm.
And now let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that all the year through, your goodness has blessed your servants with gifts ever new. Holy One, we pray, grant them a happy new year and be ever near. And now the blessing. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of the light be yours. May the fluency of our inland sea and the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and we remain with you always. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our paths. Alleluia, alleluia.